welcome back to our year-long celebration of the TV show Smallville, celebrating 20 years and 10 oh. years. It's been <laughs> I know. It's crazy. It's um, crazy. Yeah, I, I was going to have my studio light, but like I just filmed a review before this, and I feel like I just went blind, just staring at the camera. And having filmed with your studio lights, I completely understand. Yeah. <laughs> it's very blinding. Well, like, I, I, put, I took it down just for this, but... I'll probably I'll probably put it back up later. We are here today to talk about uh, the April video that we're doing, uh, and this is season three of Smallville. So once again, I am joined by Smallville aficionado and my cousin Pat Guy. How you doing today? I'm fantastic, Alex. How you doing? Good. We're both wearing superhero shirts. Yeah, Mine, there's nothing to do with DC. <laughs> yeah, mine sort of does, I guess. I love Batman. He's not really in Smallville, but he gets a mention once, sort of, offhandedly. <laughs> <laughs> he does. It's crazy. <laughs> We're going to talk about season three today. Um, we'll probably do what we did last time. We'll go episode by episode. I got the episodes up here on my iPad, and we'll just uh, we'll just give our general thoughts, uh, some of our favorite characters, episodes, what we think of each episode and the season as a whole. So let's actually get started with the season as a whole. What do you think of the season as a whole, Pat? Season three has always stuck out to me because of it's probably the uh, probably the darkest season. Oh, yeah disturbing yeah, season by far um they get away from a lot of like high school like meteor i mean there's meteor freaks always in smallville in some capacity yeah. but they get away from a lot of the kind of high school vibes and there's more like weird disturbing science experiments and like yep. really what it comes down to for me is season three what i love about it the most is that it really belongs to the luthers I yeah. think this is Lex and Lionel's seasons. Especially the middle of the season with Lex. Yes, exactly. Michael Rosenbaum really gets a chance to like go to dark places with Lex, like really dark places. Like he yeah. starts to believe he's insane because right. his dad is trying to make him make him seem crazy and then he's gonna <laughs> use electroshock therapy to wipe his mind like it's so messed up <laughs> and like Lionel too like this is the season where he's at his most evil where like he does that and then he also <laughs> by the end of the season I always remember the kind of like godfather-esque ending where like he's getting oh, his head shaved in prison yes! and while that's happening he's like blowing up his enemies <laughs> <laughs> like he's in prison and he's like getting his head shaved and chloe's safe house blows up oh, and yeah. all the people who like were witnesses against him are blowing up and he's just like thank you <laughs> <laughs> and that, it's, that, it's so that lion king mane of hair is gone unfortunately yeah. It's it's so good. Like the Luthers completely dominate this season. Like this is Lionel's best season. This is probably Lex's best season. And it's also the season where I feel like Michael Rosenbaum was still super locked in. Like you can tell later on and like especially like six and seven, you could tell Michael was kind of like, Yeah, I'm kind of done with this. Like I'm yeah. kind of yeah. I'm not putting as much oomph into Lex, but this year was a great season. It was super dark. Like I said, uh, a lot of disturbing episodes sometimes. Oh, yeah. Clark is kind of in a dark place. Like, it's just, it's kind of in a dead season. And then you get, like, a whole plot line with uh, Ian Summerholder showing up. And you're wondering, like, who is this guy? And I remember at the time, people were like, is this Bruce Wayne? Like, Adam Knight? Like, Dark Knight? And it's like, no. And then... It's uh, on the nose. Yeah, like, oh, it's Adam West reference and Dark Knight. It's like, no, it's not. And But then you find out he's actually, like, a dead guy who, like, Lex... Well, Dude, it's Lex like... Lionel. I think Lionel brought back to life. It's like if Smallville met that show, The Dead Zone. Yeah, it was weird. It was a weird plotline, but funnily enough, that is the very first episode of Smallville I ever saw was Crisis with uh, <laughs> his last episode when he's chasing Lana around with a shotgun and she's on the phone like, Clark, help me! And he's like, <laughs> and he's like dying. He's got like bleeding from his eyes. Like that was the first episode I ever saw. And when I first watched the show, I was like, all I knew about it was it was young Superman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, being the idiot I was when I was in, like, fifth grade or whatever, I was like, Lana, is that a nickname for Lois? Like, 
<laughs> like, I, like I know Clark. I know Lex Luthor. I'm like, it's weird that he's like friends with him, but like, yeah, I know Lex Luthor and I know Clark's parents. And then there's this one girl running around and they're like, Lana Lang. And I'm like, Lana Lane? Lana Lane is <laughs> Lois Lane? Like, what's happening? But obviously, as I, you know, got into the show and then ended up getting more into Superman stuff, I'm like, oh, Lana Lang, Clark's first love, especially obviously. With, especially but, where Ned O'Toole played Lana and. Superman, Superman three, yeah. yeah, but yeah, season three, it's it's an intense season, and it's uh it's very different. And then they kind of jump away from this vibe that they had. I think they realized they went kind of to some very dark, depressing places <laughs> this year, uh, and then they kind of season four gets back into very much like high school focused, um, and it's supernatural focused. Uh, yeah, we get into wishes. <laughs> <laughs> I think you summed it up perfectly for me because I think season three is one of my favorites because of everything you just mentioned, like. The middle of the season with Lex like going insane. I think it's shattered in asylum. Yeah. Two of my favorite all time episodes of the show. Are you okay? I know your secret. Don't worry. I haven't said a word to anyone. I need you to get me out of here. I've seen what you can do. Your car hit you at 60 miles an hour, then you. You tossed it like a toy. To add on to like Lex's storyline too, like you have him stranded on that island where he thinks he's seeing like he thinks there's another person there, then that and that person I think ends up being like not real. Yes, yes, which yeah. was a great, great whole sequence. Like I, I, I kind of love how it was like more like this season was more like the first two, like, yeah, you could kind of see that like Lex was like kind of jealous of Clark because I I think it was either season one or season two. I think it was one where Smallville High is like on a, a field trip to um, Luther Corp and then they all get like trapped in Luther Corp because there's that guy who's like, well, where's level three? There is no level three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy who like would like shit. Yeah, and then yeah. like, but then like, but then like, I think it's the end of that episode. We see like Martha and Jonathan Kent like hugging Clark, like, oh, like one happy family. And then you see like Lex getting reprimanded by uh, Lionel and he just looks over like those evil eyes like <laughs> like I am so jealous of you right now and I, I hate you like, I want your life <laughs> yeah but like I feel like season three like while there were stepping stones in the previous two seasons like moments like that yeah. I feel like season three was more of like okay now Lex is gonna like go insane like this was I feel like this was like the like actual starting point where he was like starting to like go like evil yeah, yeah. I mean, it was always there, like you said from the beginning. But yeah, this is when you got to see more of that dark side of Lex. Yeah, because like you'd occasionally see flashes of it, but overall, you're like, oh, he's the cool friend who's gonna like get Clark like football tickets and stuff. Yeah, he's <laughs> <laughs> just hanging out with high school dudes. <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, Clark, here's tickets to like this basketball game. Take Lana; she'll love you. <laughs> <laughs> please, please take these tickets. Take your father. Please tell him I'm sorry. Yeah, like, take oh, your dad because he oh. hates me so much <laughs> dude all the times jonathan kent was like such an asshole to lex luther i'm like i love you jonathan it's like but i said man a break it's like i said in the last episode jonathan kent had two modes man it was either protect your secret clark or fuck the luthers <laughs> oh, so and then it was just like the moments like jonathan kent would like actually like accept the luthers like all of a sudden, something would go wrong, and he'd be like, fuck the Luthers. Yeah, he'd like, maybe Lex isn't so bad, and then something would happen. And sometimes it'd be like, Lex would be like, oh, Clark, here's like a car I bought you, because I apologize. And, and Jonathan's like, you have to return that car now. So I remember I'm like, that. Come on. I do love, I do love uh, Jonathan's storyline in the first two episodes of the season, though. Oh, classic son. You're coming home with me. Son, you're coming home with me now oh, so good. Your, uh, those first two episodes man uh, oh, dude uh, exile, exile might be my Phoenix. favorite episode ever Oregon edge man Oregon edge Clark robbing well cow robbing oh. banks yeah <laughs> sorry crusty I saw it first <laughs> or just put oh. it like Cuts to him, like, I forget how the episode starts, but all of a sudden it cuts away to him, like, oh, he looks at a car, like a super expensive car, and it's like, how is he supposed to buy that? And then it cuts to him just punching open ATM <laughs> machines and just taking, <laughs> like, this is amazing. And then doesn't he drive it through the glass of the dealership? 
Uh, maybe he does. I can't remember. I think he does. <laughs> dude. Oh, dude. Oh, speaking of the last episode, when we were talking season two, we didn't know the name of the club. Ace of, Ace of, uh, it's, a uh, what is it? Ace of, is it Ace of Spades? Ace of Spades sounds right. Yeah. 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 So we get to hang out in some Ace of Spades. I love how everybody just goes on like their own like odyssey to bring Clark home. And he's like, no, fuck all of you. I love that whole, I think there's just so much good drama in those episodes. I like, know. I love Chloe having found Clark like months ago, but without telling anybody. Yeah, but he's like, no, like I'll fucking run away even further. Like, there's all that, and there's the part where she like confronts him about it, where I think Tom Welling just kills it. Yeah. He's like, Chloe, get out! Oh yeah, is that what he's <laughs> in there? He's a party. I'll never run away. <laughs> Clark, you are not forced into exile. You ran away from your problems. You are not being noble. You're being a coward. Oh, <laughs> get out! You tell anyone where I am, I will go so far away from Metropolis that no one will ever find me. I don't even know who you are anymore. Get out! <laughs> You'll never see me again. Dude, Tom, Tom Welling was on like a whole different like acting level whenever he had to do like Red K Clark or like or like oh, Clark dude. Luther. That was the best man. Well, there's yeah. also a scene that always sticks out to me in my mind, like a transition, is when he's like takes off the ring temporarily because the ring is like irritating him really badly <laughs> and he uh and he goes back to the farm and he's like listening to jonathan and martha talk and like the farm is going to hell without their super powered son to like <laughs> farm for them <laughs> so like he's like listening and they're like we're gonna lose the farm jonathan i just want clark home and then he like tips over a thing and they're like oh, clark and then that tool <laughs> does that like oh, clark clark and she like runs up the loft and he's gone and she just screams out the loft window clark and then it's like i need a sign to let <laughs> Me, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, so dude. good, man. Oh, the music choices, man. Amazing. 2002 or three or whatever. <laughs> Amazing. Whatever it came out. Clark! 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 Uh, and like just like so good and like he brings Lana to the nightclub and she's like who the hell are you <laughs> did you betray the people you love uh, but one of my favorite things in those early episodes too is Helen Bryce having obviously sabotaged Lex's yeah. plane where yeah. she somehow survived and she and Lionel fucking knows like he just can tell he's like oh yeah what did you tell the press my son gallantly gave you the last parachute <laughs> dude, and, push you. <laughs> and he's like that Lionel, is a wonderful piece of fiction Ly dude, like, Lionel, <laughs> Lionel had his way with words he was he knew how to word everything perfectly where it's like yeah I know but I don't want you to know <laughs> That's man, and this was like peak Lionel. Like he was oh. so good. Uh, dude, don't you wish like Lionel was in like other like Superman like media? Yeah, I mean it's funny because like in the comics, like at least like the continuity that they kind of run with nowadays, because DC switches it up all the goddamn time. It's hard I to know. keep. Like every like ten years. Um, <laughs> but often he's like just like an abusive farmer from Smallville. <laughs> Who <laughs> just was like abusive to Lex? <laughs> like no, he's so much better when he's like a media corporate tycoon i know right like he's like elliot carver basically <laughs> going back to like tom Welling's acting for a minute i love when like lana's in the club with him and she calls the kents and she she found them he's like oh who are you talking to and he grabs the <laughs> phone and he's like he's like i'm not coming home you're not my parents i'm not your son <laughs> <laughs> that was great i love those episodes man just like Clark, the cool, like, Clark wearing, a, like, a ski mask, standing outside of a bank as, like, a hundred cops are shooting at him, and he's just like, whatever, and it's, like, bullets are just hitting him. Yeah, so exactly. Good. Oh, yeah. Get back up! Sorry, Krusty. I saw the bank first. Oh, 
season three went places, man. I loved it. I think dude, I mean, and then, Exile, I think, is dude, just like... Dude, and then, like, and then Jonathan Kent going to Metropolis to get his son back. Son, you're coming with me. Then you you end the episode on a huge cliffhanger where Jonathan has his fucking powers because he went to he went to the cave to get jor to give him his powers temporarily. And that's how he gets Clark home. Ah, oh, such good stuff. So good. And just, like, even the episode after that where you're kind of dealing with the aftermath, and, I mean, we're kind of getting into, like, the episode by episode, but, like, the just Morgan Edge showing up at the farm, like... Get back in your car and get the hell out! <laughs> <laughs> it's just so good man like i don't know season three it starts off so good with those couple episodes and then it's like pretty consistently great like as it goes dude i'm a firm believer rucker Hauer is the same character in this as he is in batman begins i i would hope so i hope that what was his name in batman <laughs> Cross, begins? subtle crossover what was his name mr earl what's his name yeah mr earl yeah I mean, like if he's just secretly uh his alias is just like an underground crime mafia guy <laughs> he's about <laughs> cody <laughs> well dude it's funny too because they obviously couldn't get rutger hauer back because yeah. then when they brought morgan edge back he had like <laughs> a super like blofeld level facial surgery <laughs> so he looked like a completely different person <laughs> dude i oh man rutger hauer man rest in peace great times on some of some of these like superhero media Yep. I mean, season three, too, I mean, you get a lot of big moments. You get, like, Clark finding out that Lex has been, like, investigating him ever since the car crash. Yeah, yeah and then, I mean, in one of those episodes, too, doesn't where Lex goes crazy, doesn't Clark confront him about it? And then isn't that that whole scene where, like, Lex swings the sword at him and it shatters? That's the one where Clark's having nightmares, I think. Oh, uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> slumber, I think. Um Oh, I hated that episode. I <laughs> um, but this is also the season when Pete leaves. <laughs> Pete oh. the boss, Ross. Yeah. Which Probably he, for the best. He has his uh, Tokyo Drift episode in this season. <laughs> you did. Uh, Velocity, right? Pete the boss, Ross, where he's using kryptonite Nas. <laughs> yeah, Pete leaves, which was kind of emotional, even though he kind of didn't have a purpose on the show anymore, really. Yeah. Um, he's like, I'll see you around, Clark. I'm like, no, we'll see you once. <laughs> in a really bad episode I, I, yeah i think they they honestly could have probably made him like a guest star they um, should there should have been like in season four clark's football team could have faced pete's football team or something like that you know yeah so yeah it's uh, pete lee's uh lana this season has that you know, like i was talking about before the whole thing where she ends up she gets kicked by a horse <laughs> and, then, and then she needs physical therapy so ian summerholder is like Hello, I'm Damon Salvatore. I will be your physical therapist today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing with Lana is it's just like the early seasons, like they know there's nothing to do. Like she has nothing to do. Like season one, she literally had nothing to do it's, other it's than tough because she's just the girl next door. I so know. The, yeah. And then like, and then like, I like that. But like, again, like these early seasons, like I said, in season two, I'm like, I'm, I'm accepting of the fact that they actually tried to give her something to do because I was like, they're trying to make her more interesting. Like season two, they gave her the whole thing where she's trying to look for her real father. This one, it's like, Oh, like she gets kicked by a horse and now she's in physical therapy. But like that, and now she met this dude named Adam. Is it Adam? Adam. Yeah. Adam. Yeah. Nice. yeah. And it's like, it's like, okay, season four, they give her fucking witches. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, yeah. Not the but best. I, I understand what they were trying to do. I'm just like what they did though. Honestly, wasn't that interesting. No, and I mean, it's funny, too, because uh, I remember when I was younger, like, when I was first watching the show, like, watching Clark keep screwing up with Lana over and over again, like, in this <laughs> season especially, where she's, like, very open in the beginning of, like, right. Clark, I still want to make it work. Like, I, you're at, yeah, you went off to Metropolis and acted like a lunatic, but, like, I still want to make it work. And he's like, oh, but we can't, Lana. And I'm like, come on. And then, like, there's, I remember after she gets kicked by the horse and she comes out of physical therapy, there's, like, a welcome back Lana party at the Talon at the end of an episode. And Clark walks in with flowers and he's like happy to see her at first. And then he sees her crutch and he's like, <gasps> and he like walks away and I'm like, come on. It's Clark. not your fault. Buddy. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's the thing. Like, I don't think we really touched on that, honestly, like in season two. And I didn't even touch on it in season one throughout the majority of the show. I would say until about like season eight, season nine, maybe like, I mean, or at least until, like, Lana or finds out about a secret and all that. 
Yeah. Like he's Clark is very insecure. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. And he always comes up with a, a like because he has to keep a secret, obviously. But yeah. like he he comes up with all the like, oh, it's for your own protection. Everyone knows there's something weird about Clark. They just don't know what. Exactly. He's so shady about it. I know. Like it's just like it's like oh I remember like I think they said like Tom Welling would be like on like he'd be reading the script or they'd be doing like a table read and then like he'd get to like one of those moments and he would literally like either punch the table or punch himself in the head and be like God Clark is a fucking idiot. Yep. Because he is. <laughs> he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Season three though I really like I'm looking forward to getting episode by episode for refresher because I feel like some of it I'm yeah. For- should we should we get into that now? Yeah, I'm I'm down. Yeah. Like I, I mean, we've that... already talked about Exile and Phoenix. Exile was perfect, man. Phoenix was also great. Yeah, uh, and I mean, I mean, also the iconic shot of Smallville with uh, Cal in the phone booth having to rip open the shirt. Oh, and there's like well, the oh, Supermanish yeah, S. I meant to bring that up earlier. Yeah, because it's like he gets like what? Where did that scar come from? I forget. Uh, so when he is uh, at the season two finale, he when he's talking to Jarrell for the first time in the ship. Oh yeah, yeah, the yeah. The ship brands oh, Clark. I remember, yeah. And then he rips it open in the phone booth in this classic Superman moment, where yeah. it's like like that scar on his chest is supposed to represent like the Superman symbol. Yeah. It, kind it of doesn't look like an S. It looks like an eight. But. Yeah. It's close uh, enough. <laughs> yeah, close enough. But like I like it, it was just like such a subtle reference to like oh hey like. This is like the Superman symbol. Like it works. Like it was. It was really cool. I kind of feel like he looked at it as like an icon of like banishment. You know. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Well, I think it definitely was like a reminder that he wants to stay away from all that. Yeah. But then he kept wearing that red kryptonite for some reason that really irritate that mark. Yeah. I remember that. I meant to bring that up earlier because that was that because that was a good moment. And yeah. you, get, you get it in the DVD menu where it's like all in a row. See him rip off the shirt. Those DVD menus are classic. Man. I know, dude. Oh, all in a round. <laughs> so mercy. Episode three was Extinction. Extinction. Oh, yeah. Kryptonite Bullet Guy. Yeah. That's a classic. I know. That was messed up. When Clark got shot and they had to take the bullet out, I remember when I was like in sixth grade, I'm like, oh, this is so (laughs) gruesome. But not really. I know. It's like, like, yeah, no, not today. Like, Uh, I've seen worse. Oh, yeah. Jesus. But at the time, it was like, ugh. Yeah. Uh, Four was Slumber. I'm not really a huge fan of that show of uh, that episode i just think of the weird like image of that meteor freak or whatever where it's like in the red robe and you don't see his face it's a, a very yeah, it is very weird and the girl the girl in that um the girl that plays sarah in that episode was uh on uh supernatural oh really yeah she was ava 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 oh oh yes 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 the psychics yes yeah episode five is perry Director, oh. your favorite director, Geno Schwartz, <laughs> Schwartz or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Director of the Academy Award-winning Supergirl film. Well, it's it's actually <laughs> it's actually interesting because Michael McKean plays Perry White, and he's actually Annette O'Toole's husband in real life. Yeah, and it's cool because I mean Perry's such a big part of the Superman mythos. Yeah. Um. So seeing him come in was cool, but then they didn't use him again till like season nine. <laughs> It will, and then and then he came back for the finale, but you don't even see him in the finale. Right. It's you just hear him go, Great Caesar's ghost, which was great, but like, yeah, yeah it would have been I mean, cool to see him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll episode see. six is one of my least favorite of the season. That is Relic. That's that one where like Jarrell possibly came to like Smallville. In the oh, 50s. yes, the fifties or whatever. Met up with, like Lana's like ancestor, uh, and they're played by Tom and Chris. Then, yeah, that was yeah. weird. That was a weird one. Yeah, I was never huge on any of the, like I said before, the Kawachi caves, any of the Kryptonians on Earth. <laughs> yeah, like stuff. just any anything that had to do with like, oh, maybe Jarrell was on Smallville like twenty years ago. I'm like, no, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Don't give me that. Yeah. I, I can know. I can live with the fact that I guess like you can split like Doom like Doomsday has like multiple personalities and you can split them into two separate entities. I can't live with the fact that Jarrell possibly came to Smallville like a long time ago and was like, oh hey, this is why I sent you here, son. <laughs> <laughs> They're good <Yeah>. people. <laughs> <laughs> I also think it's weird that like they cast Tom Welling to play young Jarrell. But then when you see like Julian Sands Jarrell later on, it's weird. He looks nothing like Tom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fucking weird, man. Seven is magnetic. That's the one with the kid from Airbud, who is like <laughs> Alex. That doesn't help me. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not, I think like he he had like uh, magnetic could... like powers or he was basically he was basically Magneto. discount Magneto. Yeah, I can sort of. I can't remember the plot of it, but I can. It was the one where Lana fell in love with him, and then like. Yes. Okay. Yes. He, she's attraction was also like. Yeah. Yeah. Emotional attraction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those meteor freaks with their powers that don't make any sense. <laughs> All right. Oh. Eight and nine, we kind of already talked about. I am drooling from the mouth after that. Hold on. Thank God for editing. <laughs> <laughs> um. Eight and nine, we already talked about a little bit. We can get into it more if you want. Uh, eight and nine are shattered in asylum, where Lex goes nuts. I mean, Which, I just think shattered was Michael Rosenbaum's like tour de force. Of that. Dude, I think I think both of them are because it's like it's a two parter, honestly. I always remember him sitting in like that laying in like that like contraption where he can't move in a yeah. asylum, and he's just like, ah! I, I just love, I just love how like the whole like the f- whole like first half of the season is just like, oh, Lex is crazy because he's stuck on the island with uh with that like hobo guy <laughs> who's basically like i feel like that was like they're like oh hey we saw a castaway one too many times so let's just put lex on an island and have it not be real and then and then you have this stuff i'm just like man like lex is like a shattered broken man in the first half of the season well, especially because his nurse wife turned out to be a psychopath i and know to right murder him. <laughs> i know right well i also really like asylum because it's the first time you get like multiple meteor freaks from multiple seasons team yeah. up yeah, and it, it felt like a, like a dude, legion of doom it, it was a cinematic universe before cinematic universes existed like you had sean ashmore as the guy with for the with the electricity you got clark's powers that time yeah uh, you had um uh, jonathan taylor thomas came was back yep and then the kryptonite bullet guy was there too yeah uh, and it was cool. It was a cool, like, team-up thing. And it made sense. Like, of course, a bunch of the Meteor Freaks Clark beat, like, ended up in Belle Reve. Which would be, which is awesome, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. It was a cool episode. I like Asylum a lot. I especially like the beginning when you first see them where Clark's, like, visiting Lex. And as he's leaving, he, like, bumps into all these people. They're like, hey, what's up, Kent? Like, you know, like, <laughs> they all hate his guts. Yeah, I know. It's, oh, it's awesome. I liked all that. That was cool. Yeah. Ten is uh, Whisper, where Clark, uh, temporarily gets blinded so that's where he develops a uh, superhero right here. yeah where they used to do the whole cgi like dive into your ear and you see the low but it's like boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they eventually kind of got rid of that because what they a waste did, like, of they did, like, you know like you know like uh like back in the day how like if you if you did like a drawing in like kindergarten you like you couldn't put words on it yeah. and you had to like you had to like do um like somebody speaking and you did like those like you know what I'm talking about? Like the uh, the three like half circles. Yeah. Dude, I remember they did that too. It wasn't just the lobe. It was like they did. I was like, yes, we get it. He's hearing people, right? Like Jesus. Eleven was delete. Delete. Oh, uh, I kind of remember that. Isn't it's there a like Chloe a Chloe one? Yeah. Is there a hacker or something? Yeah. Uh, when Chloe uncovers a se- secret experiment at Summerholt Institute, someone begins sending mind controlling emails to her friends with orders to kill. Yes, her. yes, yes, yes. That was actually a pretty good one. Yeah, I kind of remember that one. Toy Man was in that one before yeah. he was Toy Man. He saw T2 one too many times. <laughs> I like him. He says, okie dokie. I love that actor. I wish he was in more stuff. I know. Chris Gothier. Yeah, he's cool. I'm, dude, I'm glad they just brought him back like later on, too. That's Toy Man. Yeah. That was, that was cool. Season nine. Yeah. He was going to blow up Oliver Queen? <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> 12 hereafter. Uh, I think that's the one with the guy who can, like, see how people die. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that, was, that was a weird one. It was kind and of depressing. Where Lot, he sees Lana is going to die in a fire in, like, a few days. Yeah, but then eventually he sees she's going to die of, like, old age. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. 
We saved the day. That's depressing. <laughs> yeah. 13. Peak the Boss Ross velocity. <laughs> Go up, you rock fist. You can feel it when I drop this. <laughs> I just remember that song. Yeah, it had that kid from like Disney Channel from like Smart House and Luck of the Irish. Yeah. <laughs> he was yeah. the bad guy. Yep. <laughs> He's like, where's my money, Pete? <laughs> Basically, Smallville's answer to Fast and Furious. It was so weird because Pete was just so out of character. He's like, well, you like to go fast, Clark. I just want to go fast. I'm like, what the <laughs> shit? <laughs> The like, Pete, this is dangerous. You can't street race. You almost killed my dad the other day. <laughs> 14, Obsession. I remember that one. That was with Alicia. Oh, oh like, yeah. Crazy, man. That was How a crazy I forget episode. about Alicia? I know. That was... She was scary sometimes. She was. She was really scary. She could teleport. Oh, so okay. she'd, like, teleport That's into right. Yeah, because she teleported... Yeah, she teleported into Clark's room. That's Which right. Which is hilarious when the parents found them in bed together. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember John. John kept Clark. Are you, you better wait. <laughs> He's like, hey, you fall or something? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Alicia was crazy, and then they had to like. There was a whole mess of backstory. I remember where she was like, the only way you could prevent her from teleporting is if you kept her in like a lead room. You remember that her parents oh, used to oh, yeah. like keep so, her in so a lead like, room. But, so it was like they were like combining like something Clark like couldn't see through. So right. like. Yeah, and she wore like that lead bracelet all the time. Yeah, and then uh, the way they beat her in that episode, because she ended up trying to kill like Chloe and Lana. Yeah, and like uh, Clark, I think, just like threw a can of lead paint <laughs> all over her, <laughs> so she couldn't teleport. <laughs> That was Dude, some of the shit that they did to resolve some of these episodes is like you're looking back on it it's like it's hilarious so good man so good yeah 15 was resurrection with uh oh, yeah, yeah. our boy Adriel. yeah yeah uh what's his name uh he's got a weird name tomo uh, Panikit. tomo Panikit. yeah he was in that yeah yeah, the bomber in the hospital. Yeah. 16 is Crisis. Which was the first episode I ever saw. <laughs> yep. That, that's the one where it's like, it begins with like, in like the middle of things, right? With Lana like running through the like, rain. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, she calls during the lightning storm and somehow that makes it so that call goes to the past. <laughs> and they hear it in like the call center. Dude, we're going like all like Dennis Quaid frequency. Yeah. Dude, I'll tell you, this show was not afraid to do anything. Like it would just come up with all sorts of shit and just go... Meteor rocks, and that's how they <laughs> excuse for everything. Seventeen was legacy. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Do you remember that one? I think so. Didn't that one have Virgil Swan in it? I think it did. No. Clark begins to suspect Jor- that Jarrell is sending Jonathan messages through the key, and he is the cause of for his father's withdrawal from the family. Clark goes down to the case to confront his biological father. Lana gives support and comfort to Clark because, of course, (laughs) which leads to a kiss. Of course. Hey, that aired on. Oh, no, it didn't. Legacy. Yeah, it did. It did air on my birthday. (laughs) Happy birthday from like 15 (laughs) years ago. (laughs) Uh, Lana talks to Lex about losing faith in Clark. I don't remember this one. Uh, I feel like Virgil Swan showed up at the end, but maybe there's just one. Yeah. I, yeah it's, he does because lion he's there with lionel at the end that's right yep yeah hinting at the veritas storyline <laughs> that went nowhere <laughs> we'll get to that what a weird thing that was <laughs> um, i know right uh 18 was truth that is that the one where chloe and lana had the cat fight well that's the one where chloe is uh forcing like she she can make you tell the truth just by talking to her. Yep. Like, I'm, she gets sprayed by something in Luther Corp, and then she, she Pete kisses Chloe because he admits his feelings for her. <laughs> yeah, that was a weird one. That was a really weird they one. They had to, like, inject Chloe, like, Pulp Fiction yeah, style. Yeah, like, I remember. I only remember that because that's in the like, in the opening for the DVD. Uh, 19 is Memoria. Uh, oh, that's where Lex is trying to like figure out his past. Yeah, yeah. That was a dark, disturbing one. <laughs> Ta- Twenty was Talisman, directed by everybody's favorite uh, Jonathan Kent. 
Talisman was the one with the goddamn Kawachi cave dagger, right? Mm-hmm. That was a weird one, man. Where the guy has like the dagger and it gives him like super speed. <laughs> He's like killing Clark. The the true Naman. Yeah, yeah. And, like Lionel <laughs> Lex both try to grab the dagger and it disintegrates. It's like, <gasps> which one is the real bad guy? But it's like <laughs> obviously Lex. <laughs> yeah. But the next two, I think, are great. Forsaken and Covenant. What was Forsaken? And, oh, that's the one where Emily comes back. Oh yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, yeah that was a, that was a great one. And then um, Covenant, I think, is amazing. Yeah, it had the weird uh, fake Kara. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I really like the ending of that episode, which, like I talked about earlier. Girl, which was Sam's girlfriend from Supernatural. Yeah, Adrian Palicki or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the ending of that episode I always really liked. Like I thought it was a good cliffhanger, like like clark ends up trapped in the cave wall and uh lionel's like blowing everyone up <laughs> dude other other than Lex gets poison dude other than season seven and season eight smallville did a pretty damn good job with their season finales yeah overall i, I, I always enjoyed the finales except I, like you said seven and eight's finales were underwhelming to say the least <laughs> eight yeah, like, was very very infuriating yeah uh, <laughs> We'll get to that, but that yeah. <laughs> like a one season finale. That season finale ruined what had been a very good season. What? Yeah, uh, eight, eight. Yeah. Oh, right. well, uh, season eight kind of always goes down for me anyway, because you have that whole middle section where Lois just disappears, and then it's and then it's Lana. Yeah. And it c- comes back. I'm like, eh. overall, I was really loved that storyline, and then they just. I know. We'll get to it, but they. Yeah. yeah that hurt. Henry James Olsen, rest in peace. Stop it. <laughs> and yeah, overall, I thought they always did good on their finales. I always was, like, left want- wanting to see what happened in the premiere. I know, dude. Like, I feel like their premieres and their finales were just, like... <laughs> at, like, at the time they aired, you know? Yeah, for sure. Like, it was, it was so interesting. Like, I really don't know where I would rank this if I would put it above two. I think I said last time I would put two above this one, but just, like, barely. Yeah, I would probably be the same. I think two is more fun to watch. Yeah. Because uh, I think three does get very dark and very depressing sometimes. But at the same time, it's just like, I love how this is more like two themes where it's like, oh, Lex is like driving towards his dark side. And then you have Clark like in Metropolis, like him doing all the evil stuff. And then like a lot of the season focuses on like Clark's fall- like the fallout of like his consequences. Mm hmm. So I love I love that about this season too. For sure. Any other moments that stick out? I'm trying to think. Season three, um, not really. I mean, I've, I've ranted enough about how much oh, I, I love. Like two, I feel like two had more moments that stuck out too. Yeah, it had more iconic moments. I think. Um, yeah, season three wasn't as memorable. I feel like people are gonna be like, "What are you drinking, piss?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's the lex luther's grandma's peach tea or whatever <laughs> oh god oh lex luther jr <laughs> um but yeah i mean season three i don't like i said like i just said i don't think it's that memorable overall i think it's good when you watch it but it doesn't yeah. stick to me as much. yeah like like I, I was remembering too a lot more like i'm thinking it like I, I just went through those episodes like the one like relic like that that one sticks out to me because i hate that episode yeah but like but like i mean there's like there's obviously like moments that stick out to me like i mean the two-part premiere obviously yeah that's what i always think of when i think yeah like i always think of that and then when like shattered in asylum when like lex is like going nuts but yeah i think overall i think i prefer two over three um but i still i still really like three there's just there's just some things in three where i feel like you kind of were going somewhere that you didn't go anywhere yeah i could see that yeah like the whole talisman thing that we were just talking I'm about telling you, man, the kawachi cave stuff was never my cup of tea <laughs> well luckily when we get to season four they at least it's don't well, do love, it as much yeah like i love how uh the finale is called commencement and then it's basically like oh yay we're getting rid of it it's a commencement because we're finally getting rid of the kawachi caves yeah, we'll give you the fortress of solitude instead i'm like thank yeah. you finally <laughs> yeah yeah we'll get there though yeah Four is gonna be fun to talk about. Four, four is good if you take out the witches. 
<laughs> like it's so good but like it could have been like amazing yeah they, oh man man that's gonna be fun that's gonna be should fun. we just talk about four yeah i'm down actually or should we just do this in one video <laughs> no we could we could do separate because this is already about 45 minutes yeah and by the time you edit it'll probably be like 40 yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're going to end season three right here. And then we're going to jump into season four. Dude, I'm ready. Let's talk about season four. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Pat, where can they find you real quick? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at this Pat guy, along with I'm um, on Cinemania, uh, Cinemania World Hero Hour, um, as well as uh, we're going to be having our own podcast release, hopefully soon, Alex. Uh, we got yeah. a Star Wars one called Jabba's Palace. And we got another one that we had a title. Then we're like, man, we don't really like that title. So now it's just untitled at the moment. <laughs> I say we just release it as untitled podcast. <laughs> untitled movie podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's where you can find me. You can find me at my official website, alexmadamovies.mystrikingly.com. All my social media links are there. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking with us for this celebration year-long celebration of smallville it means a lot to us as you can probably damn tell um but thank you for watching we'll see you at the movies somewhere <laughs>